All right, uh, let's, you know, we're going to talk about everything going on with Starbucks, pulling the guidance and everything, but I, I think that's really a stock story. Why don't we begin with McDonald's, a very serious situation. One person has lost their lives. Of course, our thoughts are first and foremost with those people, as well as the people that may get sick. Uh, health officials have said more cases could come up. So I want to make that clear. Uh, the loss of life is the most important thing here, but there also is an investor impact. Uh, let's talk about McDonald's. How do you see the investor impact going not only today, but just long term? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it will really come down to essentially how we uh, how we have you know seen the coverage by media at various examples of this type of you know foodborne illness. So it's, it's run the gamut really when we look at precedent kind of uh, incidences of E. coli outbreaks or other foodborne illness. Um, you know, if if the um, media attention and the outbreak itself is short-lived. Uh, it can almost be transitory in the impact, um, you know, point to like a Wendy's in 2022. Um, but at the other end of the spectrum, certainly, uh, you know, given the severity, um, you know, and, and depending on how long this lasts and how much media attention, and I think, you know, McDonald's does typically absorb more scrutiny than most, you know, it can be, it, it can have a dampening impact on demand for, for some time. Uh, just a few years ago, back in 2015, actually, Chipotle had an E. coli outbreak. They had to pay a $25 million fine. Also saw their sales growth fall very dramatically. Is that a similar situation that you see playing out here with McDonald's? It also took a couple years for really it seemed like consumers to regain confidence in the company. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. So when I think about, you know, an, uh, a company where it was much more prolonged, you know, to your point, Chipotle first, uh, first and foremost comes to mind. And I think that there were a couple of um, differentiating uh, in incidences or, or characterizations of that um, incident. And basically what we saw was, uh, first of all, you know, again, very intense media scrutiny, very widespread. So something upwards of a 1,000 people were affected. Um, there were also a series of other foodborne illnesses that emerged associated with Chipotle. Now, that's uh, unfortunately not at all unusual, but the extent to which uh, the media were paying attention very much was. So I think a lot of it will come down to, like I said, um, how long this lingers in the news and McDonald's ability to shift the narrative. So that's something else that we know about Chipotle was that yeah, they really couldn't get out from under that <laughs> microscope, pardon the pun, um, by doing other things like marketing or menu innovation, okay. the types of uh, things that would that would shift the narrative for, for consumers. All right. So again, McDonald's shares down out their lows when this news first broke down about 6% right now, but also weighing very heavily on the Dow in the pre-market. Uh, I want to switch gears over to Chipotle. We heard from CEO Brian Nickel talking about some of the problems, um, you know, just became CEO not too long ago. How big of a deal is it for a company of this magnitude to pull their full year guidance for next year? Um, I think, to some extent, this was not entirely unexpected. Um, you know, we have a lot of real-time uh, data when we when we look at restaurants. You know, people look at things like credit card or, or do channel checks. Um, and it was obvious that Starbucks, same store sales, were not uh, recovering to the extent that the, the company had initially thought. So I think, you know, given the the divergence between you know, the hope for outcomes and then the reality, as well as just the fact that, as you point out, you know, Brian is 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 new. The guidance was never his uh, to begin with. So the guidance that we're, we're talking about was given by a previous CEO. I don't think is is totally um, surprising that 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 he would he would pull it, especially in a, a very you know transition year like like the one we're looking at. You know, sir, I'm actually a bit surprised that you say that. I heard a lot of people say it wasn't surprising that the pre-report uh, was very soft. The fact that uh, they're going to miss estimates, that's largely probably why Brian Nickel was brought in. Uh, but I've heard some other people say it was a bit surprising for a company like this to completely pull guidance. Uh, I want to go back to some of the things that he said in that video. One of the things he talked about was basically making the actual store experience a little bit more friendly, uh, making it more of a place that people want to congregate and go. Is that really the issue here, or is it more about... Um, you know, just changes in consumer behavior, changes in consumer behavior in China. In your mind, is one of the key things is the, the store experience? Uh, well, let me, before I, before I sort of answer that, let me just to remind everybody that uh, a couple of years ago when uh, Howard Schultz was the CEO, he also pulled guidance. Um, that was because, uh, in that case, China was very volatile. It was really hard to know what was going to happen there. So it's not unprecedented even for Starbucks okay. um, when, you know, big business is, is, is really moving in the, in the opposite direction. Um, that's a, to, your, to your question. I think, uh, the, you know, again, there's a branding issue, certainly, that's that's emerged for this. Uh, you know, Brian was, was there, actually. He turned around Chipotle. So in, in some ways, uh, you know, he's the through line here for this conversation. 
And I think you know, that's the, that's one thing that they need to do is they certainly need to change the conversation about Starbucks. Uh, and when you bring people in, though, you want them to have a good experience. And so that's where the operations come in. You know, you really can't have that scrum of people waiting for their drinks. You want to give baristas the time to engage with customers. I mean, that's really what Starbucks is about, is that warmth and that interpersonal engagement. Uh, and it's become very difficult for um, the people who are working there to do that. 